Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me today, Jamie Loftus. Hi. Hi. What's up? Not much. Just uh, hanging out in the back in the basement again. Oh, we're we're back. Comedy store. Good times down here. Soundproof. Lots of history. I love, I love a good soundproof room. You're just you just know something fucked up has happened. Of course. That's why they have to make it soundproof. Exactly. Yeah, they're like, "Well, you know, we we want we, people can see, but they can't fully understand unless they're present." Speaking of fucked up history, today we're talking about 16 Candles. I think I'm still spiraling from rewatching. I was like, you know, crimes could happen anywhere, you know. Um, yeah, 16 Candles. Jesus Christ. What are you, what's, what's your beef with it? What do you, what, flat line, baseline, log line? I, I mean, two, two prongs. I don't like John Hughes movies and it's just like the rape culture movie of uh, ever? I don't know. Uh, not, yeah. not ever, but one of the most best loved movies that is just, there's just rape stuff happening every two seconds. Left and right. Crazy. Constantly. Yeah. By the heroes of the movie. Mm-hmm. Not by bad guys. No. By good guys that we like. Yeah. Whew. It's real. It's a nightmare. There's, I had never seen this movie until you told me that you wanted to, to talk about it for the show. Uh-huh. And so I watched it last night. And it's a it's a movie that feels very disjointed. Yeah, it's like sort of like a vignette mm-hmm. kind of quality to it. Yeah. A lot of fade to blacks for no reason. Yeah, and a lot of weird sound effects. Oh my god, there's some there's literally a moment where there's a boner and it goes sprawling. I, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Is this what is happening in this movie? There's so much going know. on in this movie. All right, so if there's you haven't seen it in a little bit, just to catch you up, 16 Candles is a 1984 American coming of age comedy film starring Molly Ringwald, Michael Schofling, and Anthony Michael Hall, written and directed by John Hughes. Uh, it follows a high school sophomore. Struggling to go through the day on her 16th birthday, which her entire family has forgotten about because it's her older sister's wedding. Those parts are still, those are the parts that still resonated with me. I was like, that's, it's so sad. Those are the only good parts of the movie. Yeah. The movie's like a third heartwarming and, and, and nice. And you feel, you really feel for Sam and mm-hmm. then. Uh, just a third real creepy and rapey and then a third crazy racist stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. It is like 33% of this movie is is, is a fun watch. Yeah. <laughs> this movie, would this would be a great pilot. There's a, yeah, there's a solid 30 minutes in this movie. For sure. That is acceptable today. But the rest of it, oh man. Well, let's go. Yes. First, you, you don't like John Hughes movies. I don't like John Hughes movies. Uh, there's never, I mean, they're slightly, you know, they're like after our time a little bit. Like I, you know, my mom was the first person to show me John Hughes movies. And of course it was like The Breakfast Club and mm-hmm. You Gotta, which is also, you know, riddled with issues. But uh, yeah, it's just the, the movies never really hit for me when I was younger for whatever reason. And then when I watched them when I was older, older it's i mean they're (laughs) everything it's so freaky and i have a general um i also i feel like i should just like disclaim at the top that i have like a gender movie podcast so i I, right the bechtel cast yeah so i tend to really laser in on this stuff just because of uh my job but the the it's it's every it oh god his movies are a, a mess and there's a weird like I feel like there's still, this is still kind of a thing that happens a lot where you're like, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of women in this movie. This movie passes the Bechdel test Mm -hmm. a million times. It like, there's a lot of like, it allegedly stars a woman, even though that's kind of like, eh, does it? Uh, there, there's a lot of female characters. They get a lot of screen time, but it's written like, like I guess the the phenomenon of like a guy in his thirties writing a teenage girl character just makes the weirdest, most fucked up movies. Right, because there's 
such a lack of experience on John Hughes's part with being a teenage yeah, girl. What the fuck does he, he know? have to fill it up with all of this other stuff to pad the movie out? And this happens like it's such a weirdly common thing. And this is a movie I liked, but like even Bo Burnham's movie, uh, Eighth Grade, he's writing mm-hmm. the experience of a teenage girl, and and there's like always this same pull quote from the male director of like, "Well, I guess I just am a teenage girl on the inside. I guess I'm just so sensey that I just, I don't know, it just comes to me and blah blah." And you're like. Dude, you that, but that's not what being a teenage girl is like. It's what you made up. And right. he's like, I guess I just get it. I don't know. You're I just like, know what it's like to get to be a teenage. I see, and I can't even say it because I don't know what it's like to be a teenage girl any more than I know what it's like to be a teenage boy. But it's just, it's just weird that, uh, yeah, like, because you're like, oh, it is good that there's women in movies and on screen but the experience they're conveying is so like it's just like uncanny valley weird of Mm -hmm. the way they talk to each other and what they talk about it's just weird there's a lot in this movie that it it felt like i was taken out almost from the jump even with some of the stuff with Mm -hmm. molly ringwald and i like i said those are my favorite parts of the yeah. whole movie, but even from the like, she picks up the she just picks up the phone. Oh my god! And, isn't, yeah. <laughs> and doesn't dial it. Is just on the phone with somebody like, after she's mo- <laughs> a, a, I thought she was monologuing to herself in the mirror, and then right. it turns out she's just been like talking to her friend the it's whole like, time. I guess I'm 16 and no one freaking cares. Uh, <laughs> like, all right, cool. Okay. We're here. <laughs> There's a lot of this movie, though. You're it's. You're, I think you're spot on when you mentioned that it's a, it's sort of a female protagonist in name only or in in advertising only because there's so much yeah. this movie that is not focused on her. Right, right, right. Because it's most it's it's like more than half of it is like boy time, you know. And mm-hmm. then there's the other. Oh, third, I could talk for a million hours about how many things John Hughes does that bothers me. The thing that's nice is a lot of people, like even Molly Ringwald is like, yeah, 16 Candles, ugh, probably don't rewatch it. Yeah. Uh, like she goes on record now being like pretty rapey movie. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, like the way John Hughes writes, like the nerd characters he writes are so scary. Like I, I feel like it gives you a really incelly template. Yeah, it's yeah. it's proto incels. Yeah, because I don't think as as someone who was a nerd, mm-hmm. I don't remember ever ha- like. There's nobody who I was hanging out with right. in my group of nerd friends who was like Anthony Michael Hall or John Cusack or whatever the no. other dude is. I know, I I did seeing Joan Cusack in this movie is such a fun treat though. But they're yeah, I mean the way that they're so they're like they're nerds, but they're we never even see demonstration that they're smart. No, like, they just hang. They have a lot of technology around them at all times, have, and that's how we making, know that they're nerds. They're like yeah, making floppy disk related bets with each other. <laughs> Very eighties. I bet you twelve <laughs> floppy disks. You can't rape a girl today, and I was like. This is a movie. Uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, just like the vengeful... I mean, Revenge of the Nerds, right? But mm-hmm. the yeah, the vengeful, horny, like, peak entitled, like, retaliating on a woman who rejects you and never taking no for an answer because there's that whole movie narrative of, like... You know, just just uh, just hang in there. You got to wear her down. She'll just keep trying to hump her in a car. Yeah, over and over oh, again. That scene is insane grapples her like spider-man oh my god that and real real just like it's crazy so t- it, and it's because it's one of those things that like i can understand why at the time people saw that and they're like ah, oh, look at how silly he's being we're but rooting for him he's he's the sympathetic character yeah he's we're, <laughs> he's we supposed want- to be the one you want to it, hang out with it is like it, it's one of my it is one of the most fascinating scenes in the movie because of just like he's obviously wrong right he keeps trying to have sex with her but we're supposed to be taking away like oh he just doesn't get it he's young but it like even the way her character this is what bothers me about like older dudes writing 
yeah, writing young female characters that young girls go and watch and they're like, oh, I guess it's just what you do if mm-hmm. that happens. Uh, but he like, she, he tries to like hump her. I, mean, I wrote down the sequence of events because it is bananas. It's like he tries to hump her and she's like, no, she's she's been saying no to him the whole movie, but whatever. He keeps you know turning up, uh, and then he uh, he says, "Oh, okay." And then she says, "I'm sorry if I like." She apologizes to him, and then he tries to hump her again, and she's like, "No," and then she apologizes to him again. again. And then he still tries one more time and the scene ends with a really cute, can I have your underwear to show to all of my incel future school shooter friends? For 10 minutes. For 10 minutes. Horrible. Big lie too on top of it. Yeah. Keeps it the whole movie practically. He Yeah. And then he's showing it to a char- the only character in the movie who's even worse than Anthony Michael Hall, who's like, oh, yeah, uh, give me Molly Ringwald's underwear and I'll let you rape my girlfriend. Right. What? <laughs> that scene is just as crazy. I just. Ah, the lives of rich suburbanites. <gasps> oh, my God. You can just pass off my girlfriend and in, uh, in your dad's Rolls Royce. Right, and, and then he, rape in a church parking lot. He's so big brother about it too. He's like, "Yeah, hey, go." She doesn't know what's going on, or like that scene where he's like, the scene, "Yeah, I, I could go upstairs and violate her ten different ways if I wanted to." But I'm starting to think maybe I want to fall in love. I was like, "What are you talking about?" It doesn't make any sense. Even the part where he gets her in the car and Anthony Michael Hall's in the driver's seat and she's like what's going on and he's like oh that's me yeah don't uh, worry about and it and then she goes okay totally fine oh it's it's so and the, and then that whole scene where they're posing her like corpse with him yeah and it's so creepy and there i was thinking about this i forget why i chose this movie specifically but it has been on my mind i mean it's so like and this is this is like sort of a, a stretch, but one of the some stuff I saw written about it recently, like connects it to like Kavanaugh trial culture of like, oh, well, like no one will get raped at a party. It's like, remember that really popular movie that came out about raping people at parties the year this was supposed to have happened? Not even just really popular, critically acclaimed. People love it. They it's, love it. Everybody, uh, I told uh, my girlfriend that I was going to be talking about this movie on the show, and mm-hmm. she was like, who hates 16 Candles? And then she was like, actually, it doesn't really, there's a lot of stuff in there that doesn't hold up. You're right. Ooh, I Yeah, it's like, I mean, then the first time I saw it when I was a teenager, I didn't think anything. I just was like, oh, I, it's just not my favorite movie, but yeah. I don't know why. You couldn't really, do, and there was just nothing at the time that you could really put a finger on why you didn't I like just it didn't yeah i just like was like well i don't go to parties so i can't really re- this movie is not i can't relate with it because this movie isn't about losers who stay inside uh but but yeah <laughs> watching it now it is uh is, is trouble and there's there's i mean almost every john hughes movie except perhaps uncle buck um <laughs> which i've never seen unfortunately it's a treat. I enjoy Uncle Buck. Uh, for some, I I really love John Candy too, but I don't. For some reason, that's the one thing in the John Hughes oeuvre that I'm like, you know what? Though I still hold a candle for. Uh, well, Uncle let me Buck. ask this: Are there any weird, creepy teen rapey scenes going on in Uncle Buck? No, it's mostly about Uncle Buck learning to be a good uncle. <laughs> See, this sounds so much more wholesome. It is wholesome. It's wholesome in the way that all these movies pretend they're being. Right. But they're actually not. There's, I, God, the the Jake Ryan character is bad for so many reasons. First of all, one of my rules is a man with two first names cannot be trusted he's basically untraceable jake ryan scary scary name from the jump uh but like the way john hughes writes these like popular characters because this is what's the the john hughes movie i used to really like that it like hurt my feelings when it turned out to suck was pretty in pink Mm -hmm. i really liked pretty in pink um but 
the the way he writes popular characters is like okay you have this couple and they're hot and together like um what's the what's the name of the girl anthony michael hall rapes in the movie again carolyn carolyn okay so yeah carolyn and jake are together and they're popular so they're you know in the same social cast but the way john hughes writes those characters is that carolyn is a vapid dumb slut who like only cares about material stuff blah 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 which is like okay if that's how you're writing a popular character then shouldn't that apply to all your characters but the 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 popular boys that john hughes writes is like it's almost like in the same way that like fucked up guys get away with shit on tv all the time of like well yeah don draper is like a horrible person but it's because it's because of something that and it's sad because he so, hurts on the inside and yeah, he's he, got he doesn't he has identity crises he's in pain man we gotta you, you and and that, that's how john hughes treats like the popular boys but he does not give any depth to the girls Mm -hmm. and the girls are just sitting there getting their hair cut off because (sighs) they don't know how to open a door themselves i know hair out of the (laughs) poor carolyn and yeah and but then like the whole narrative with jake is like yeah he's popular and hot but he wants more than that he wants to date a nerdy girl which is uh you okay but like but but then he's like, but I'm going to let a 14-year-old rape my girlfriend. And then I'm really going to learn a thing or two about uh, a woman I can love and respect. Yeah. It's like, oh. There's okay. so many better ways to write teenagers. That's yeah, that the, are more fun to watch, yeah. too. That's the thing. Like, if you're looking at, if you want to do a movie that's about a teen romance that does it right and this is I don't I can't believe that I'm bringing this up ooh I can't wait A Walk to Remember <gasps> a cancer story right <laughs> and it's not just a cancer story a cancer story where nobody likes the girl at first because she's like the new nerdy girl yeah and then the popular Pastor's guy's daughter. like hey uh, you're you seem nice and oh, you also have cancer. Well, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be super cool about it. I'm gonna love you anyway. Oh, and he's like, I'm gonna marry you. Then you're gonna die. I'm gonna be sad forever. Yeah, I'm such a sucker for the movies where I. That's a that's a fun trope that is like, the boy learns to love a girl, and by by her dying of cancer, he thinks maybe I'll be nice to people now. Right, <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's even, funny. But that's like a more compelling. Yeah. version and i think more i mean everybody likes to write teenagers in movies as pieces of shit which i sure. get because teenagers can be real pieces of shit for sure but you can also write compassionate teenagers and teenagers right. that feel like people and not just stereotypes and john hughes does that sometimes mm-hmm. but it's like so all over the place and usually the character is like I don't know. I think that he truly died being like, wow, I really wrote a lot of amazing characters for Molly Ringwald. Uh, But he didn't. He didn't. He didn't write a single one. (laughs) Using her as a muse. Oh, gosh. I know. It's like that must suck so much to be. I mean, you know, she's the most famous teenager in the world. That must be cool. Yeah. But, you know, like being, you know, being older and being like, oh, shit, I was accidentally saying stuff I did not want to be saying. Right. Do you think... At the time, Mm -hmm. Molly Ringwald reads a script where her grandma grabs her boobs Mm -hmm. in the hallway and it's a laugh moment. (sighs) It's like, well, this is, I guess this is my career. I guess this is where I got to go. It's so weird. Like, I don't know. I, cause, cause what would she have had to compare it to at that time? Like, what was like, oh, well, here's a movie that is, I, I, my guess, and I don't know, like, I don't, I would need to do more research. And as I was telling you before we started recording, I love homework so much. Uh, but, you know, it's like there are so few teen movies that, like, starred a girl who had some sort of brain mm-hmm. that I'm sure that, that this, this might have seemed great. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, a girl's in it and we get to hear what she thinks about stuff. Of course, the things we get to hear about is what she thinks about pretty much a boy exclusively. But you see your family and you see like, I'm, I, I'm, I, I would guess that you probably see more of like a girl's interior life in this movie than you would have 
during most, but it's still so bad. Well, especially, yeah, because during the 80s, the landscape is pretty barren for movies like this. <sighs> but there's moments that Reagan do, hellscape. Yeah, and there's <laughs> but there are moments that do feel nice. Yeah. Like the very end of the movie mm-hmm. when Molly Ringwald is in the hallway with her mom and yeah. the little brother run, is like just being a piece of shit. That little scamp. Great little scamp. I character, like that by little scamp. He a does fun it. Li- who is that little scamp? I hope he's doing. Good. I know. I'm trying to figure out who he is on on this on this thing. He's I think like it's Justin Henry. Peak little scamp. Mike Baker, I think, is this kid's name. Uh, but anyway, but the, mo- this, the when he like runs to and and like uh, like tackles his way into whatever room it is. And then the mom's like, he deep down feels bad. And then they both yeah. are like, no, he doesn't. And it's just like a nice, it's a the moment that feels the most genuine of the whole movie. The family stuff, I thought, I, I, the, some of the sister stuff was weird, but the, the family stuff in general, <laughs> minus the grandma boob honking, was like sweet and like, you know, comedy rompy. And, and the fact that you see both of her parents feel really bad Mm -hmm. and they want to make it up to her you're it's it's nice i don't know just then kind of in the way that like and i i i don't know how much i mean this because i haven't seen pretty in pink in a while but i used to really like the scenes between molly ringwald and her dad her like single dad uh in pretty in pink where like they were really nice and i don't know maybe that's something that I guess it's easier to write a family because, you know, if that's what John Hughes's understanding of a family is, that seems probably like he does because it, right. it, it feels real and not like completely, I don't know. But then, I don't know. It's How much do you blame movies and then how much do you blame people just being bad? Because I'm sure that this was, this would appear to be a semi-accurate reflection of something at that time like whether right. it's like what party culture was like i don't know i mean and that's well the other thing about the parties in this movie or the one party rather is yeah. that it feels i've never i've i've never been to a, a house party that felt as excessive as this house party did especially I, in high school Right, I mean, and well, I didn't go to a ton of parties in high school. I was not either. that kind of. It was I'm, not. All invited. I have to compare it to it is like, well, that doesn't seem like what Mark Joseph's basement was like. But I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe this is what people are doing. I well, but then it's like a chicken or the egg thing of like, were parties like this, and John Hughes is writing a reflection of that, or does John Hughes write a party like this, and then teenagers see it and they're like, oh, okay, that's how a party works. I think it's the. I think it's that way. It's hard yeah. to tell though, because they also yeah. have. I mean, the teen. There's so many. I can. You can look back on John Hughes's filmography and think, oh yeah, he probably spawned a lot of tropes. Like I am right. having. I have a hard time thinking about high school movies mm-hmm. before John Hughes came around. I have a hard time thinking about movies that involved really big blowout parties except for Animal House before John Hughes came around and oh, even gosh. and and John Hughes is in the National Lampoon extended universe as it is, so yeah. he probably had his fingers uh, involved in making making that sort of stuff happen. Sure. Sort of pu- pu- you know, puppeting the marionette strings. That's, I, right, and it's, it's like got to be It's got to be at least some of like because I'm trying to think of how, like, literally, my favorite movie when I was a teenager was Juno. And I was, like, you know, a t- teenage girl had a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings. Not going to call myself a complete dumb idiot. But I saw Juno, and I'm like, yeah, I should totally get pregnant. <laughs> it seems like it would be interesting. You know, I, I should get pregnant. And what I should, a fun character trait. And I should give the baby away, and that would be a fun, cute thing for me to do. So it had, to some level, first of all, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Right, <laughs> for sure. I'm a dumbass. You see a movie about teen pregnancy, you're like, I gotta get teen pregnant today. And you see Jennifer's body after that, like, I'm gonna get possessed. This seems <laughs> great. Anything Diablo Cody writes onto a piece of paper is my new life. Uh, was how I felt when I was a teenager. I'm gonna write a series of young adult books and then alienate every person in my life, and then really give Pat Oswalt a talking to. <laughs> Stern. There's, Stern talking I really, to. I really like young adult. I saw. I like rewatched it recently. I was like, oh. Good. This one holds up. Young Adult is a very good movie. And did you see Tully? I haven't seen Tully, no. Tully is Tully is a real nice movie. I used to be so I like avoided seeing Tully because I used to be so obsessed with Diablo Cody when I was a teenager that it was like 
embarrassing and I would be teased because of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I just would carry around like, like she was a picture of her in my room. Your Twitter handle used to be hamburger phone, right? Yeah. I yeah. really Very I made obsessed. that in high school. I really <laughs> loved Diablo Cody in high school. I thought she was so cool. I was like, she used to be a stripper. And I read her stripper memoir the whole whole bit she's writing the barbie movie which i find very exciting that is that is an exciting development i, I didn't know. know that the barbie movie's gone through so many changes over the course of the past couple months now it's diablo cody is writing still i'm pretty sure and then i think margot robbie's gonna be barbie i think so yeah that's, that's ex- that seems to be the last thing i saw about it that's exciting but anyway so t- <laughs> but no i mean I, I love tangents but i also Ooh. love talking about the mistakes that john hughes has made yes and i think it, it, the more I look at his filmography and just h- hold my cursor over things on his Wikipedia page, mm-hmm. the more I think, why didn't you just stick to mostly making family movies and movies about families? Right. Be- I, I, that seems more ripe for the kind of comedy that he wanted to make. And that's what he's better at doing. Yeah. So I I don't know. It's because, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like... John Hughes was supposed to write these teen movies that took teenagers more seriously than other teen movies. Mm-hmm. Like that was his thing. But then there's this whole other half of his writing that is extremely dismissive of him. And I'm like, did he, he couldn't not know that when you're that famous and you know, everyone's going to see your movie. If you tell children, Hey, just rape each other. And you're the hero of the movie. They may do that. Maybe. Like, you can't just... I literally... I mean, I, I'm going to keep pulling from the... Like, I was like, you know, I'm Juno. I'm getting pregnant, and I'm going to say a lot of quippy little fun things, and that's who I am now. Yeah, but you're going to get pregnant consensually. Exact, exact. Like, it's, it's upsetting, but yes. And I'm going to choose to keep the baby, and I'll consider abortion, but I'll decide against it. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of... But I still was like, I should get pregnant and um it would be a good soundtrack <laughs> i mean that was a very good soundtrack it was a great soundtrack. just don't just don't get too close to jason bateman and everything will be gravy from there <laughs> so so creepy yeah if there were a movie that if you became if you became mm-hmm. the hot teen movie writer person okay what would you have your story be like if you were making it doesn't have to be your version of 16 candles but like what are the kinds of things that you think need to be shown about teens um to make it feel more accurate well i kind of took a little baby poopy on it earlier but i but like eighth grade i think is a very well done teen movie i just think it's annoying when male directors are like i guess i just sort of have the heart of a young girl it's like no you don't stop but uh but i I thought i really liked that movie where it's I would never like I don't know sometimes there's like this whole oh I'm getting into one of my holes hold on there's a thing that happens sometimes where it's like okay now we're we're all able to be like yeah there's a lot of rapes happening in this popular movie Mm -hmm. hopefully that shouldn't happen and then the response to that is like let's write a world for teenagers where nothing bad happens and everyone makes the right decision and so then every character is someone that a teenager could model themselves after. So like this would be, this is not the movie I want to write, but this is the movie I think the, there will be movies like this in response to what's been going on of mm-hmm. like, let's write, uh, you know, teenage boy characters who are the hero and they're like very respectful and they're very, like their issues are blah, blah, blah. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're, they, there's an egregious, like a, f- you know, a six line consent before anything happens. And right. I think that that's good and should happen. But what I would like to do and what I hope would be more interesting and useful to teenagers is to like write a world where teenagers fuck up because they will always, but like experience consequences for it and have to like deal with their shit instead of i don't know like responding to like a rape culture movie by writing a world where rape culture doesn't exist just feels kind of off yeah uh so i I don't know i'm like maybe it'd be about prom well did Uh, you ever see did you ever see the spectacular now 
I had, no, I haven't seen that. So that's a movie. I that's that's what I would recommend uh, okay. if you want to see a movie that's sort of in that vein. Yeah, because that movie is a teen romance movie mm-hmm. first of all, but it also features. So it's got Miles Teller and Shailene Woodley, and they are love it. They fall. They fall for each other. <gasps> I and, love Shailene, Woodley. and they're both they're both so great in this movie. Mm-hmm. But Miles Teller is a teenage alcoholic. And okay. so he's like the popular kid, but he's not a jock, really. Is and he like a rich burnout? Sort of, yeah. Such a type. I mean, the opening line of the Wikipedia page is, says uh, Sutter Keeley is a and boy, what a what a Ooh, what Sutter a boy, what a good old boy name. Movie name, I love it. <laughs> Sutter Keeley is a charming and popular eighteen year old who is partying and drinking his way through senior year in high school when his girlfriend Cassidy Roy, played by Brie Larson, <gasps> hello, holler, uh, decides he's a lost cause and breaks up with him. She starts seeing the school president and an athletic star. And so then he uh, he basically is a drunk the whole movie, and uh-huh. he and like the, the inciting incident is him waking up on Shailene Woodley's lawn, and they Ooh. don't know each other. Is this the movie where Shailene Woodley has cancer, or is that a different? No, one? No, that's a different one. That's Fault in Our Stars. Right. This one, right. she just has a I'm boyfriend. Like Shailene Woodley was for sure in one of those cancer movies. She has a boyfriend who is a cancer upon her life, basically. Oh, got and it, got that's it. That's the thing, because like, he, he, he fucks up constantly, yeah. and he faces consequences for it. Like He fails his senior year of high school, spoiler alert. Ooh. But it's a very good movie anyway. Yeah. And he, like, he, the, the relationship goes south, and his school goes south, and... He has to face the consequences of his actions, but he also does all of this stuff that feels like he has like a normal good heart and that he's not right. trying to actively be a bad person. He just has so much more to learn about how to exist in the world. That feels like a more useful like and I and it's like there I don't know. I, I think that there's there's like such a like, well, movies like that can't be fun. But they so can. They totally can. Yeah. And and, and like if you're whatever, if you're a teenage boy seeing that and fucking up in the way every teenager is going to, seeing a character who fucks up in a way that maybe you do, and then they have to deal with it is 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 better than seeing for sure better than like John Hughes style just seeing them get away with it and getting a high five mm-hmm. you know because then you're like you're Brett Kavanaugh 30 years later you're like oh I didn't know <laughs> or you know I didn't do it uh but but yeah like I, I that's I guess that's what I would I would like I I always I want to write um a teen movie about band Oh yeah, were you band a band gal? Of course band I kid? was. What instrument did you play? Ooh, guess. Um, when you hear it, you're gonna mm, be like 100. percent Oboe. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. That was so exciting. <laughs> yes. It was either that or clarinet. It was. Oh god. I mean, I can handle a double read, a uh, single read. <laughs> give me a break. There. <laughs> yes, I I uh, loved playing the oboe. Wow. How long did you uh, were you in band for? Eleven years. Jesus. It was. I I did a weird thing in high school that I, I think ended up working in my favor, where I sort of, uh, I was like I was oboe loser, but I also was the captain of the dance team, so I kind of got to like. Oh, I there you go. Existed in a neutral zone. Very nice. I yeah. was. I avoided being in band because I I don't remember what I had to do on the day, but there's that day where. It's they show it in eighth grade where you go to the high school the gym. Yeah. and you just go like and hang out and you like see what everything's about and the different mm-hmm. groups. And I remember doing it in middle school and I, I missed band because I missed that day and I missed it again in high school too. And I Lucky. got I, I wound up doing theater stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. And that's so a, that's a, a whole other world. It's a whole other whole other world full of full of <laughs> nerds and losers. Yeah. But it was uh it was my people. Uh, so I, lo- I was also in drama. I was just like a loser overachiever. As I said, I love my homework. <laughs> I love, um, yeah, yeah. No, I wonder uh, a, a good band movie. Mm. I haven't Overdue. ever. That doesn't exist. I can't think of one. Where's the good band movie at? Mr. Holland's Opus. Give me a break. Is Whiplash isn't a high school band movie, and that mm. one is just more about. There's Miles Teller again. Isn't that just about like J.K. Simmons emotionally abusing yeah, Miles Teller into being movie. a good? drummer exactly it's a movie it's a movie about the 
about the about being emotionally abused. Yeah, that's what the whole movie is. I, I still haven't seen it. It's it's really good, but it's, it's also good. just it's harrowing. Yeah, because it's but it's supposed it like it's feels that, to be way, that way, right? Yeah, yeah. It, you feel very that I don't remember if that came out the same year as Gravity, but I remember mm. there was a there was a year where there were a lot of really tense movies that came out, just like bullied into greatness movies. Yeah, or, oof. and it sh- and that's the whole I mean the whole mess that's the whole thing about Whiplash. Yeah, you should definitely watch Whiplash. Watch okay. Miles Teller. Go watch Whiplash and a Spectacular Now. Oh yeah, I guess it's a Miles. Te- isn't it? Isn't Miles Teller supposed to be like a really scary, mean guy? Yeah, I've yeah. heard that. I've heard he's not uh, I, the best dude. I had to edit an interview with him once, and uh, had to like reach out to his publicist to be like, "Hey, I have some follow up questions." And she, she was like, "Miles Teller will not be speaking to anyone for the next two weeks." Ooh. So I was like, "Okay, sorry." Yikes! So I just wanted to check what his birthday was, but. <laughs> You're right. (laughs) (laughs) So much for that. Yep. Jamie, thanks so much for coming on today. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me. Where can the listeners find you? Of course, there's your your podcast, The Bechtel Cast. The Bechtel Cast. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at Jamie Loftus Help. And yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. You can find me on the internet at... Wow, I can't even say my own Twitter handle today. (laughs) At Diet J on Twitter and Instagram jlightcomedy.com for show dates Mm -hmm. and go leave a rating go leave a review for the podcast on iTunes it's a fun time I want to climb I want to climb these TV and film charts and be right next to the Bechtel cast get up there man I would love to but I got all these Game of Thrones recap podcasts the the recap podcasts are going to be we keep getting bumped by the I swear to God if you're running a recap podcast we see you and you're you're trying to game the system stop it yeah, cut it out. Not a fan. Cut it out. But you know what I am a fan of? What? Jamie Loftus. <laughs> I'm a fan of Jay Light. Oh, thank you. Uh, this has been Blockbusting, everybody. Go see something good for a change. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet.